everyone and welcome back. This is Heidi again from the Launchpad here with our series of videos on embroidering your own sampler. Before we get to Rebecca, I just wanted to remind you of where we've been. So here's my running stitch, our threaded running stitch, the cross stitch, and our star stitch. And today we're moving on to the back stitch and the fern stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. Hopefully you've threaded your needle and you're ready to go. And Rebecca is going to go ahead and show us how to do those stitches. I'll see you at the end with my process update and just to say goodbye. Okay, so we have learned the running stitch, the threaded running stitch, the cross stitch, and the star stitch. And all these are building on each other. And now the next stitch we're gonna do is one that is very uh, dominant in this design, which is the back stitch. The back stitch is fantastic. It's, I've used it for almost everything. <laughs> So this is a really important one. And uh, so it's number two on the sampler. And it is many of the lines. There's this line, that one. Almost all of these are back stitches. But I'm going to start in the middle because it's the longest one and you can see. So instead of starting at the base, which is what we have been doing, we're going to start up a little bit higher. And this is where we're going to have to start getting a little more control over the length of our stitches and how they look. So that's this very important stitch to learn for embroidery. You're going to start here. And then you're gonna go back, which is why it's called the back stitch. And now the complication we're adding here is that you have to decide where to bring it up next. And we're always gonna go further ahead and then back. And we're gonna to try to keep our stitches to about the length of a grain of rice. You're not gonna be perfect and I'm not perfect and certainly that's okay. But it's gonna allow you this series of stitches to create very nice straight lines, just a little tiny bit of a blip. Sometimes you're gonna want them really thick and you're gonna to wanna to draw a lot of attention to the fact that you're basically creating a little divot here. But most often you're probably gonna to wanna to not draw attention to that divot. And you're just gonna to wanna to go right back into the hole that you created previously. You can use the stitches over here as a guide for how long these stitches can be. I'm going a tiny bit longer. That's just a, a static choice. I could go a little shorter. In fact, I might be getting too long. <laughs> but yeah, using the stitches to the right as a guide is a good way to get an idea of how long you want your stitches to be. You want them to be about this long, but with no space between them. It's a very relaxing stitch. It's great for long straight lines and it is great for um, all kinds of outlining. Um, I, a lot of people use it for facial features, uh, dresses, any kind of outline stitch where you want a nice straight crisp line. The real trick is getting to go right back in that line. Or I'm sorry, that hole. We're just going to do this the whole length. And I'm doing what a lot of people do, which is somehow my stitches are just getting longer as I go, which is not great. <laughs> but it's typical and you can make adjustments so you can fix it as you're moving. We're going to take this the whole length of the way always coming out a little bit and then back in the same hole. I've got to pull a little bit, make sure. Now this is the one that probably looks the most, a little bit messier on the back, but pretty close. There are certain stitches that that's the goal is to make it look the same on the front and the back, but overall that is not the goal. It really doesn't matter if it looks the same on the front and back. All that matters is that the front looks nice and consistent. And then finally we finish it off just like we did all the others by turning it over and weaving it back in a couple of times. And then creating a little knot. 
There you go. You cut it off and we're all good. And you're gonna to wanna to do that on every line that has a two. So most of these <laughs> will be getting the back stitch. And I'm gonna go ahead and complete the back stitches and show you what it looks like in our next video. So as I've been filling in the back stitches throughout this design, I've noticed that my fabric has become kind of loose. And if that happens to you, it's a pretty simple fix. You just pull around the edges and then just double check and make sure that this is tight. And that's it. And I do that a couple times a project. It happens all the time. Just a quick tip, thanks. Okay, I've taken the liberty of filling in all the back stitches. So what we are left with are three columns to complete. We've got two, these two, which are gonna be reserved for the chain stitch. And then I'm gonna show you what looks like a fussy stitch, but is actually just three straight stitches of equal length that radiate out from the same central point. So I am going to show you this. We start a fern stitch at the top and the central point in this particular case is here. So we pull that through and we complete our first straight stitch. Then we pull it through again in the same hole and make our second stitch. And then our third straight stitch. Again, coming up pretty much close to this central hole. Although I will say the first one is the hardest because the knot is on the back. So since I knot my thread, sometimes I have to pull the knot over a little bit. It kind of just depends. You can also pull it right next to it. It's not the end of the world if you don't get it exactly in that hole, right? Then you're gonna come down and do the exact same thing again. This is our last time going through that central stitch. And we're gonna pull up from the same spot again. Do our first little fern leaf. And then again. And our final little fern leaf. It's just a series of simple three straight stitches. And again, you can do this with or without a printed pattern. If you had a sleeve or a uh, pocket that you wanted to decorate, you could do a simple uh, fern stitch there, right down the middle or on the edging. And it gives the sense of a slight botanical element that's also very simple to stitch. The hardest thing about this stitch is coming back up through the same hole multiple times. Especially if you ha you're using six strands of thread, that becomes very challenging. But in this case, we're using three, so it shouldn't be too bad. And we just repeat this pattern the whole way down. I like using bright colors for this. And that's the basics for the fern stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this as we go to give you a couple more samples or examples of how to do this. And then for our final stitch, we will learn the chain stitch, which is one of my favorites. Since the fern stitch can be a little tricky, I wanted to also get a close up of me doing it. So again, this is coming up through the central point, making a straight stitch up, coming back up through that same point twice to make both of the little leaves. And then I'm gonna make one more just so you get a good idea. If you have any questions, actually, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the library or to me and we'll be happy to help. 
this is getting a little short. This is taking quite a bit more thread than the previous stitches. So I will have to get another bit of floss. All right, I think that's good. I'm gonna finish this up and then we will learn our last stitch. Oh, and I'm back. That was a lot of back stitch to get through. Remember to take your time. This is supposed to be a relaxing, enjoyable pursuit, not something you have to feel rushed or hurried through. So if you don't get it all done in one sitting, that's okay. These videos will be here. You can come back if you need extra help or you can set it down for a moment, go do something else and come back when you're ready. Um, so just to show what I finished, um, let's get you a close up. You can see I got all of that different um, back stitch done. So back stitch and back stitch and more back stitch. And then of course over here, I've got this gorgeous fern stitch. It really is beautiful. So we have one more stitch left to go though in our next video. And then Rebecca is gonna go ahead and take some time to show us uh, one way to finish off our, um, our sampler. So two more videos, one more skill, and then some finishing techniques and tips, um, and a few additional resources. So just like Rebecca said, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, digital maker at itpld.org. Uh, remember to like this video if you found it helpful or you enjoyed Rebecca's witty banter and make sure you subscribe to the ITPLD YouTube channel so you can see what other content we have coming out. Um, also don't forget to share your process and progress pictures we, um, we want to see what you're doing and making at home. It's always exciting to, to see the great work that you're doing, the new skills that you're learning, and just to see the beauty of the art that you are working on. Um, all those details will be included on the slide that's about to come up. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.